let's talk about this book. Talk about that title, Spending Your Way to Wealth. Now, this sounds backwards to me. <laughs> well, let me start by explaining a few words or defining a few words. And I'm going to see if I can share uh, a little screen sharing here. Well, here's an example of some terms. Uh, uh, the definition of wealth, because that shows up in the title of the book, wealth is an abundance of something of value. It doesn't have to be money. It could be a whole lot of things that have value. We could have a wealth of integrity, a wealth of decency, a wealth of generosity, uh, a wealth of great memories, a wealth of friendship, all kinds of wealth that are worthy, worthy pursuits. We should all strive to have a wealth of some of those valuable uh, aspects of who we are. And yeah, we need to have a uh, some level of wealth and financial assets so we can go on doing the things that we want to do in life and need to do. We need to have some level of financial sufficiency, maybe is a better word than wealth. Uh, and spending, uh, terminology there, is an exchange of one thing of value for something else of greater perceived value. Again, nothing in the word spending that denotes money. Although when we hear the title of the book, Spending Your Way to Wealth, we almost think immediately that it must be about money and investing or whatever. And yeah, there's a big component of it, but it's really about acquiring those wealths that are important in life uh, and spending things beyond just money, spending time to get an education, spending time with family, doing the things that are meaningful. So the book has a real broad reach. It's a book that should appeal to anybody that's aspiring to have a really fulfilling life. Uh, and I like to start with an example because the book starts off talking about how normal we are. Uh, and we are normal. Uh, but here's an interesting question to contemplate. Start with a penny and double it every day for 31 days. And how much do you suppose you have at the end of 31 days? Uh, I put on talks on cruise ships. And when I have an audience of people of some size and uh, I ask this question, uh, I just ask the question and people say, well, I don't know, you might have Oh, uh, maybe five hundred thousand uh, dollars, and somebody else say, "No, I think it might be more than. It might be closer to a million. Or somebody says, "No, that seems high." Well, the answer to the question is twenty-one million dollars, and uh, I'm not sure you can see that whole slide there. But, you can't. Uh, you go out to twenty-seven. I, I will tell you, by the way, Paul, that I posed this question to my six-year-old grandson. And uh, I, I, this is really terrible, but I offered to pay him if he could tell me whether he would take a job for $100 a day or for 30 days or take a penny for the first day and double it every day. And he got out his calculator, doubled it 30 days and said he'd take the, he'd take the 30 day payoff. But uh, <laughs> anyway, it's a, and good a great, for you it's for having story. In, good for you for instilling in him. The, the thought process of taking the time to consider that because most people's idea is way, way less than the answer. And all it takes there is that 31 columns or 31 rows in a column sheet, just doubling, starting in a penny, two pennies, four pennies, and right up there to 21 million. But the point of the question is, the answer is so far outside most people's thinking mm -hmm. uh, area that they really can't contemplate something as big as 21 million when you start with a penny. And why is that? Why, why does our mind sort of not allow us to do something that's as simple as multiplying something by two 31 times? Uh, here's another example of how normal we are. I, again, I call this windmill number one because I was putting this presentation on while we were cruising through the Mediterranean in Spain and everybody was thinking about Don Quixote and windmills. Uh, but it's analogous to having a lot of windmills rattling around in our brain. Uh, a bat and a ball, it costs a dollar and 10 cents. Uh, you know, pretty straightforward. A bat and a ball costs a dollar and 10 cents. A bat costs a dollar more than the ball. Okay, again, pretty straightforward. So it's a pretty simple mathematic calculation. If you ask how much does a ball cost, it has to cost 10 cents, right? I mean, it's just intuitive. The two together cost a dollar ten cents. The bat costs a dollar more. The ball has to cost ten cents. Ninety-nine percent of the time, that's the answer. Whether they're prompted to agree with it or I just ask the question and then shut up and let them answer, it's ten cents. That's what I guess. Wrong. Yeah, it's absolutely wrong. It cannot cost ten cents. It costs a nickel. Well, why can't it cost ten cents? 
Well, if the bat costs a dollar more than the ball, which the question stated, if the ball costs 10 cents, which is your answer that people come up with, the bat would have to cost a dollar and 10 cents. And if you take a dollar and 10 cent bat and you add a 10 cent ball to it, you have a dollar and 20 cents. But the question started off saying they cost a dollar and 10 cents. So the answer that we all come up with almost instantaneously, we don't think about it, it's so obvious, it's intuitive, that answer is wrong. And, why and by the way, Paul, I, I of course got it wrong the first time as well. And even when I knew the answer, I still had to stop and think about it. It still was counterintuitive. And I, I, you're right. These, there are a lot of these brain tricks. The, trick, the brain plays tricks on us. And unfortunately, sometimes that happens with investing. Well, it does. And we just are so normal when we do this. Uh, I had people on cruise ship that came up to me the next day and said, tell me again how that ball cost five cents. Same yeah. with you, Paul. <laughs> you know, you think about it. And I dare say people that are listening to this or watching it will have the same question. They'll go back afterwards, try to figure it out. And uh, yeah, you can use algebra to do it, uh, but you don't need to. Just if you know it's not 10 cents, take another number and plug it in and see what you come up with. If it costs five cents, the bat costs a dollar more. That makes the bat cost a dollar and five cents. And a dollar and five cent bat and a five cent ball is a dollar 20. Voila. A dollar 10. Uh, yeah. So that, that's just kind of yeah. how we think.